Here's the tilt lever. Just gotta rip her off like that. It's the only way it comes off. Uh, and it should slide right back on there in the end. Very interesting, because there's no apparent way to remove this besides just to rip it off. All right, there's a few. Gotta remove this cover. And there's some Torx, T20 Torx. I've got a, basically a screwdriver. One up there, and there's two there on the bottom. I think there's a fourth one somewhere. It's just a matter of unscrewing it. This is the easy part. Right, here's your two pieces. Just kind of got to wiggle them out. And here's your ignition switch. And the truck was run a couple hours ago. And this is actually still pretty warm, so I think these things get pretty hot. So it kind of makes sense that over time they may fail. Okay, next step here. This is your tilt lever. And this bracket that holds it, we're going to have to remove it because otherwise the ignition switch can't be removed. There's a bolt underneath there we got to get to. So we've got to disconnect these two. And then we're also going to have to disconnect this big one back here. And that, this one's got a tab on it. I think these are just going to pull right out. All right, here we got the tilt bracket loosened. That was a T25 Torx. Looks like there's actually still another bolt. All right here you see the tilt lever off. It took a T25, and I had to use this because it was on there so tight I needed more leverage. So coming under here to the ignition switch, you can see... There's two black Torx bolts there that hold that in place. And of course, we've still got our big connector on the back we're gonna have to slide off. All right, we got the old Valio OEM unit out. Here's a look at the big connector. You gotta pull that white thing up and you gotta slide that red thing over and it should pull right out in that case. Here's our new one, which I was looking at for comparison, this is like a, I don't know, I hope this is a decent replacement. It's not, it doesn't have a brand on it or anything like that. And we're gonna just uh, basically plug and play at this point. Here's a new one going in. You can see this white tab. After you plug it in, make sure that fits pretty much all the way down. That basically indicates to you that it's all the way plugged in. You can even see the white stuff in there. There's some tabs on the side of this thing that that thing sits flush up against. If it's not pushed in far enough, this won't close the whole way. So, you know, give it a little bit more of a push and that'll close down. All right, I've installed the new one and I just wanted to show the old one real quick and discuss some of the issues I had with fitting the new one in. Firstly, these little rectangular things on each side have a little plastic piece that slides into them. On the new one, that was not wide enough. I had to widen them a little bit by hand with a flathead screwdriver. Secondly, you see that thing in there? There's a little cylinder from the ignition cylinder that you know slides in and fits just like that. You've got to adjust your key to line up properly with that. In fact, for mine, I thought it was being that you know uh, power position, which is the opposite direction that you turn than when you start the truck. But actually. After I fiddled with it a bit, I turned it back to the normal off position and it slid right in there then. But for some people, you may have to fiddle with the key a bit to get it to fit perfectly in there. All right, with everything plugged back in, besides the covers being on and the tilt lever, we're gonna turn the key just to test to make sure we got power. Seems to work. Um, Wow. Yeah, the uh, it's almost like it's really firm. Each position of the key is really firm. Uh, almost like it needs a little bit of grease in there, but that may break in and end up like my old one here after a while.